My brothers and sisters in Christ, let us discuss in this video yet another thing that the Bible says not to do, and Latter-day Saints go right around and do it anyway, and that's found in Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. It says, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. Yeah. Wow. Why does this pertain to Latter-day Saints? If you're a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you know exactly why. Because you have in your religion something called the Word of Wisdom, and once a year you are admonished to go before your bishop in a private interview, and you even call your bishops, by the way, judges of Israel. That's a term that Latter-day Saints use for their bishop. And they also go once a year before their stake president, and their stake president asks them, Do you drink coffee? You're not allowed to drink coffee. Do you drink tea? Did you even have a sip of wine or beer? Now, I'm not talking about getting drunk. The Bible tells us we're not supposed to be drunkards. I'm talking about just having a sip of wine, like the, like the disciples did at the Last Supper when Jesus said, Here, this is my, my blood, and he gave them the wine. Latter-day Saints would have to turn that down. Did you have even a sip of wine, beer, or coffee? Did you smoke even one cigarette? All the things that you take into your body, therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. And once a year they do this. And if they've had some coffee, even a sip of coffee, their bishop says, I'm sorry, I cannot sign your temple recommend, which is a card that allows them to go into their temples because you are unworthy right now, because you had a sip of coffee or a sip of wine or a sip of beer. Now, the Bible says what? Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. And it tells you why, too. It says regarding that and also religious festivals, incidentally, and a, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. It says in verse 17, though, it says why? These are a shadow of things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Because you're thinking, I don't drink coffee, now you're saved. Because you don't drink beer or wine, that you are worthy. This is taking you away from the truth. Christ. Christ is the reality. He does not, he said, do not be concerned with what you put in your body. Jesus said that. It's what comes out, not in. And this is another example, and Latter-day Saints are big on it, especially coffee. You can't have a sip of coffee or a cup of tea. If you have a cup of English tea, you are suddenly unworthy before Christ. And you actually allow others to judge you. It says, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. You are not supposed to let anyone judge you, the Bible says, based on those things. Yet Latter-day Saints say, judge me, bishop. They go into his office privately and say, judge me. Here's what I've been doing. Now judge me. You are letting yourself be judged. This is breaking one of the commandments that Paul gave. He said, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink. The Bible is clear about this. And yet this is another example of how Latter-day Saints actually think they know better than the Bible. And they do. They think they are above the Bible. I want to insert this in this video again. If you have ever taught with mis uh, talked with missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I know this because I was a missionary for two years, full-time Mormon missionary in my younger days, left my family, left my friends, and went out abroad and taught the Mormon religion. If you've ever talked to the missionaries, they'll give you a Book of Mormon, and on the front cover, it says another testament of Jesus Christ. And they'll tell you, this is just another testament. The New Testament testifies of Jesus Christ, and this is another one. Now you have two testaments. It's just another one. But that's not what they really believe. They believe the Book of Mormon, again, is the most correct book upon the face of the earth. I'm quoting from their beliefs now. It is, quote, the most correct book upon the face of the earth, and a man will get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts, they say than any other book, close quote. And that means the New Testament. Yes, they put the Book of Mormon above even the New Testament. They act like they don't. Oh, it's just another one. It's just another. But that's not what they mean. The Book of Mormon is the keystone of their religion, they call it, not the New Testament. They believe the Bible is the Word of God as far as it's translated correctly, but we can't depend upon the Bible. So it's not the most correct book. The Book of Mormon is. This is what they actually believe. 
And so, when the Bible says something like, Therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, the Latter-day Saints think smugly, Oh, we know better than that, though because we have the true religion, we have the Book of Mormon, and these other Christians just have the Bible. And the Bible has been mistranslated, so we can't depend upon the Bible. The Latter-day Saints actually smugly think they are above the Bible. And the problem is that they are. They aren't above the Bible. Their Book of Mormon is not above the Bible. The Book of Mormon is not even what it claims, people. The Book of Mormon is full of anachronisms. What are anachronisms? That's a big word. Things that are out of place and out of time in history. For example, it talks about steel swords. It talks about how tens of thousands of people in the Book of Mormon had wars with swords. Yet we have not found one steel sword among the native indigenous people of Central, South, and North America. There were no steel swords, and that's one of a long list of long, a laundry list of things that are anachronistic in the Book of Mormon. The DNA says that the people from, from America, the people who were the indigenous people of the Americas, came from Asia. We've already looked at the paternal and the mitochondrial DNA. There's no DNA from Israel. There were no Lehites, people from Lehi. No, this was all made up, and that's the irony. Their Book of Mormon is a book of fiction. Just because it's written in King James English, they think it's scripture. And that's the irony. So they think they're above the Bible with their Book of Mormon, and their Book of Mormon isn't even what it claims to be. And that's the irony. So when the Bible tells them again, it says, therefore, do not let anyone judge you. You're not supposed to let anyone judge you by what you eat and drink. Latter-day Saints go, well, well, that's not just because it's in the Bible, but you know, the Bible's not really what it claims to be anyway. And so the Book of Mormon is the most correct book. My goodness, people, you have been led so far astray. And I know that because I've read the Book of Mormon over 40 times when I was a member of the church. And yes, it is full of anachronisms and Right and left, even fair Latter-day Saint, the Latter-day Saint apologetic group even knows that there is no archaeological evidence for the Book of Mormon. There is no ge genetic evidence. The anachronisms are a huge laundry list of anachronisms from copper smelting to horses to chariots. None of these things the indigenous people of the Americas add. Yet the Book of Mormon says they did. You have been scammed and then you smugly think you are above the Bible. So when these things come out in the Bible about how you're not supposed to allow anyone to judge you for what you eat and drink, you Latter-day Saints think you're above it. Oh, you're above the Bible. Well, you're going to be in for a big surprise.